Let's lift our voices unto him and worship the almighty God. The one who is greater than the greatest, who is better than the best, who is higher than the highest. Bless the almighty God. Give him all glory, give him all honor. Give him all adoration. Bless his holy name. He's worthy, he's worthy to be praised. There's no one like him. He is the almighty God. He's our help in ages past. It's our hope for years to come. He's the Almighty. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. If you go, Allah at Bless him, bless him. Oh, Father, we bless your name. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. Oh, yes, we give you glory. Thank you for last year, Lord. And thank you for bringing us to a brand new year. Lord, we bless your name. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Now, as an individual, you want to thank God for all He did for you last year. For keeping you alive, eyes to see, ears to hear, mouth that can see shout, hands that can still clap, legs that can see dance. Go ahead, bless the name of the Lord as an individual for what he's done for you in the past one year. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. It's worthy, it's worthy, it's worthy to be praised. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now you lift your voice to him. I said, Father, please let this year be absolutely glorious for me. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Let this year be absolutely glorious for me. Throughout the year, let it be one glory after another. Let this year be absolutely glorious for me, O Lord. Absolutely glorious.
Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now lift your voice to him. I said, Father, I have started this year well. Let me end it well. Let's talk to the Almighty God. Father, I have started this year well. Let me end this year well. I started well, Lord. Let every day be well for me this year. Let me end this year well. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And then with all your heart, back on the Lift your voice to the Almighty God. And say, Father, we pray, Baba. Arise for Nigeria. Arise for Nigeria. Arise now for Nigeria. Arise now for Nigeria. Let's talk to the Almighty God. Arise, O oh Lord, for Nigeria. Arise speedily for Nigeria. Arise, O oh Lord. Arise. Arise. Almighty God, arise. Arise for Nigeria. Arise speedily for Nigeria. Arise, O oh Lord. For Nigeria. Arise, O Lord. For Nigeria. Arise. Take absolute control, Lord. Take absolute control. Arise speedily, O oh Lord. And take absolute control of Nigeria. Arise, O oh Lord. Take absolute control, O oh Lord. Arise, O oh Lord. And take absolute control. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Lord of Lords, Alleluia, Alleluia, you are the mighty God, the great I am, Alleluia. Shalom, the Prince of Peace, Alleluia, Alleluia, you are the mighty God, the
Father Almighty, Baba Uludumari, the Prince of Peace, the one who spoke and every storm was stilled, the unchangeable changer, the rock of ages, the ancient of days, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the holy one of Israel, the king of glory, the lord of hosts, the most high higher than the highest greater than the greatest stronger than the strongest better than the best older than the oldest wiser than the wisest glory be to your holy name father glory be to your holy name Thank you for what you did last year. Thank you for what you did during the Congress. Thank you for what you did at the end of the year. Thank you for what you have done since the year began. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Today, Loni. The first Holy Ghost service in the year 2012. Do something new in our lives. Do something new in our homes. Do something new in our businesses. Do something new in your churches. Father, Baba, take control of Nigeria. Arise for this nation. Arise speedily for this nation. And Father, let all be well. Let all be well very soon. We have started this year well. Please, Lord, let us end well. Answer all our prayers tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now shake hands with about three or four people. And tell them, I'm expecting something new from God tonight. What about you? And then you may please be seated. God bless you. Let me start by saying Happy New Year to all of you. And also tell you a little story quickly before we go on. Some of you know what is called bed bugs. In the olden days, when people sleep on wooden beds and eat mats, bed bugs will also be doing a good job. I want you to know, I must say, say, Mama, so say it one law. One day, Lord Docker, a man took out his wooden bed, and because bed box hide in the nooks and corners of the bed, so when it's a repair, I need a laugh for a walk, but I go in the He poured very hot water. On the bed. And the baby box began to shout and scream. 
The mother bug said to the children, bugs. I want to nila iya. I want to bimbe. I want sofa. I want keke keto alabe. Take it easy. Emma pariwo. Emma pariwo. There's nothing hot that will not become cold. Koso unto kuna tike tutu. If you receive that, let me hear you shout hallelujah. To back by Lee, Bucky, hallelujah. Now, children born in the month of January, you can stand now. Eddie Dennis is I want to pray for you. If you are born in January, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Father, I want to thank you for your children born in the month of January. These children born in the very first month of the year must be very, very special to you. In all areas of their lives, let them confess. Let them be leaders. Give them unique miracles. Give them new joy, new blessings, new promotion. Let this year be a very successful year for them. And let them serve you like never before. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, the number 12 is a very important number. There were 12 tribes of Israel. There were 12 apostles. There are 12 gates to Jerusalem. When Jesus was 12 years old, he began to show professors that a 12 year old boy can be something special. So all children who are here today who are 12 year old stand on your feet I want to pray for you if you are 12 year old this year let me hear you shout hallelujah Ah, all right, they're out there. Father, I commit all these special children into your hands. Even as they become 12, all the blessings of adulthood release unto them in Jesus' name. The kind of wisdom that Jesus had at the age of 12. Release to them now in Jesus' name. Let them be outstanding. Let them be special. And use them mightily for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Well, if you are 12 years old, or you are the parent of someone who is 12 years old, let me hear you shout another hallelujah. Okay, hallelujah. First Kings chapter 18, verse 30 to 39. First Kings chapter 18 verse 30 to 39 
And Elijah said to all the people, Come near unto me. All the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Elijah said, "Mo kuta mejila gege bi ye ya omo Jacobu eni ti oro luwa to wa wi pe Israel ni oruko re yo ma je." And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. O kuta won yi ni o fi te pepe kan ni oruko luwa o si wa yara yi pepe na ka. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Osi to igina dara dara, osi ge ekboro akomalu na, osi to sori igi, osi wif, osi wipe, fi omi kuin koko meni, and he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. O si wipe, she ni bakeji. Once he she ni bakeji. O si wipe, she ni baketa. Once he she ni baketa. And the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. O mi na si shon, yi pepe na ka. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Oluwa Olorun Abraham, Isaac ati Israeli, je ki o di mimo loni pe iwo ni Olorun ni Israeli, emi si ni iranse re ati pe mo se gbogbo nkan woyi nipa oro re. Hear me O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. But emi Oluwa, but emi ki awon eniyan yi ki o le mo pe iwo Oluwa ni Olorun then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. God will answer your prayer by fire tonight. Amen. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord is the God, the Lord is the God. And everybody knows. Christians, non-Christians, Christians, those who believe in God and those who do not believe in Him, they know that the spiritual controls the physical. That is why those who do not have Jesus Christ, Resort to contacting forces of darkness for one thing or the other. Oni awon fi ma nba awon emi okunkun soro lati le mo bi ojo ala won o ti ri. So they bathe themselves with special soap. Won afi ose orisirisi ose we. Rub themselves with special ointment. Tabi ki won fi orisirisi ororo ma we nru para in an attempt to woo the spiritual to come to their aid. And the Christians know Christianism. 
that it is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrows to it. I prayed tonight that that blessings of the Lord that make it rich without adding any sorrow to it will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Yo, jeti e loruko Jesu. Many a times I have heard nigba pupo ni mo ti gbo of people who go to certain prophets quote and unquote. Awon ti won lo orisirisi woli lo and they come back saying ah they received miracles. Si won si pada wa wipe awon ti rise iyanugba. I always ask them the question. Mo ma nbere bere kan lowo won at what cost? And we're not talking about material cost. We are talking about spiritual cost. I want you to pay special attention tonight. This is not an ordinary night. I believe that the destinies of several people will be changed for the better tonight. A sister was barren for years. And We prayed for her. We did everything we knew. And we left everything in the hand of God. She felt that we didn't try enough. So he visited the prophet. And came back within three months. Look at me, I'm pregnant. Ah, I say congratulations. Oh, we have been praying for is that you become pregnant. One year passed. Two years. Three years. Four years. Five years. That kind of miracle that would then become a sorrow to you. You will never get it in Jesus' name. The altar is where the physical contacts the spiritual. The spiritual the spiritual. That is a place where human beings go to contact either God or demons. But the altar we are talking about tonight, the emphasis is on the word new altar. Building a new altar to God. Because whether it is God or demons that you want to contact, if it is God, God expects you to build the altar. That will prepare a place. Prepare a place. Where the two of you can meet. If it's the devil, he expects you to build the altar. Oh no, The building of the altar. Is your own responsibility. Now, there are two possibilities. Either you destroy the altars of Satan that existed before, 
Boya ko wo pepe ti satani ti tin be nbe tele tele ni. And then build a new one for God. Ki o si wa ko tutun mi fun Olorun le lori. Like it happened in Judges chapter 6. Gege bi iru ito sele ninu iwe oni dajo ori ikefa. Verse 25 to 27. Ese ik Judges 6, 25 to 27. The angel told Gideon, pull down the altar of Baal that is in your father's house and build a new altar to God. The old must go if the new is to stay. Oh, ati joni lati koja bi o ntutumba ni lati duro. Why? Kini di. Matthew 9 verse 16 to 17. Matthew ori kesan ese ikerin din logun si iketa din logun. Matthew 9 16 to 17. Matthew ori kesan ese ikerin din logun si iketa din logun. The Bible says you do not mend an old cloth by putting new one. Bibeli so wi pe we don't put new wine in old wine bottles. If you want to build a new altar to God, the first thing you must do is remove any altar to the devil. To bawa fe ko pe pe tun tun fun Olorun o nto ni lati kokoko se ni pe 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 ogbologbo oni to je ti satani ko ni lati wo pale The two cannot co exist Mejeji o le jo bara won gbe o In 2 Corinthians 5:17 Corinthi keji ori kanu ese iketa dilogun 2 Corinthians 5:17 Corinthi keji ori kanu ese iketa dilogun He said therefore if any man be in Christ We be any kenin ba nbe ninu Christ is a new creature Oh dear that unto all things are passed away Ohun atijo ti koja lo Behold all things have become new Ohun gbogbo ti ti di tuntun The altars that you have built to the devil before. They must go tonight for new altar to God to take his place. The idols you have been worshipping in your family up to tonight. I know many of you say, but I don't go there to bow down. But I only send them money for them to buy the necessary animal. For the sacrifice. That must stop tonight. A servant cannot serve two masters. This is a very special year. You need to break with the past. Because God wants to do new things. When you do that, when you destroy the altars of Satan, and you build a new one to God, you can expect the following things. Number one, you get deliverance from your enemies. Judges chapter 6. Judges 6. Verse 28 to 32. When Gideon pulled down the altars of of Baal in his father's house. The worshippers of Baal rose up against him. But the Almighty God delivered him from them all. Proverbs 16, verse 7. 
Proverbs 16 verse 7. The Bible says, when a man's ways please God, he will cause his enemies to be at peace with him. And like I told those of you who came for the Holy Communion last night, in the name that's above every other name, all the problems that plagued you in the last year, not one will follow you to this new year. Amen. Number two. When you destroy the altar of Satan, and you build the altar of God, you will get deliverance from death. Psalm 118, verse 17. Psalm 118 of Gopha. Verse 17. He said, I will live, I will not die. And I will declare the works of the Lord. They wanted to kill Gideon. But Gideon lived. Anyone, anyone who is waiting for your funeral, you will attend their burial. Amen. 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 You follow the story of Gideon. By the time you get to Judges chapter 7, verse 19 to 23, Judges 7, verse 19 to 23, you discover that Gideon had outstanding victories with just a handful of people. It was in the life of Gideon that it was first established that one man defeated a thousand. Gideon and I have good news for somebody here today. That if you will destroy the altars of Satan. And build an altar to God. From this moment onward. You will have victory without a fight. Amen. Amen. Now, the second way to build a new altar to God is like in the text we just we read at the beginning. You first of all repair the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Elijah repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Oh, thank God there are some of us who do not worship idols anymore. For a long time, we have been separated from all the idols. But then, we say we belong to the Lord. And now, we are neither hot nor cold. The altar of God that is in our life had gone into disrepair. We now serve God. When it is convenient for us. We don't want to make any sacrifice now to serve God. That must change. We must repair the altar of God 
that has gone into disrepair in our lives. Because for a new altar to be built to God, obedience must be total. The, Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 to 2. Thank you, Father. Amen. The Lord said there is someone here tonight. He said before this year ends, it will be evident that you are a child of destiny. Amen. Deuteronomy 20 verses 1 and 2. Deuteronomy God said, if you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all that he commands you. It is then that he says. Blessings will pursue you and overtake you. God hates half obedience. God will prefer that you are 100% an idol worshiper than that you will be one leg inside, one leg outside. He said, if you are lukewarm, he will spew you out of his mouth. The reason is simple. When you are not on the side of the Lord. If anything happens to you, nobody will blame God. But when people think that you belong to God, and yet half of you belongs to the devil, when something happens to you, they blame God. They say, Where is your God? And God will say, This fellow is not on my side. On more than one occasion. We have prayed and prayed and prayed for some people. And nothing happened. And in desperation, I turned to God. God, what's happening? I've done everything you taught me to do. Why is something not happening? On more than one occasion, God has said to me, as the fellow, as the fellow you are laboring for, this fellow claims to be on my side, but is not on my side. He comes to church. He sings. He shouts. When he leaves the church, what does he do? You're watching Redemption Way.